Okay, this is going to be just a quick overview of assessment task three. And you can read this, so I'm just going to hit some of the highlights. When you think about this, you know, consider how do you get evidence that students are actually learning? How do you let them know what they need to do and how do you get them to use it? How do you use that to basically plan your next moves, not just in the short term, but in the long term? And they also focus on this idea of how do you get evidence of students' use of the language function that helps you demonstrate that your learning goals are met. That all being said, when you think of what you need to do, what you have to gather is one assessment from the learning segment that you're focusing on. Now this is nice if it's, you know, part and parcel with what you showed in the instructional commentary, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. It can be at uh, a little closer to the end. Uh, if you, in, during the instruction commentary, choose uh, different lessons, you could have one where you're doing all the modeling and one where you're doing uh, guided practice and helping students work through problems. Uh, you could focus the assessment on what ultimately comes from that, and that's one way to go. Um, you should have evidence of the essential learning strategy, and again, the example we've kind of been using is writing a persuasive essay, um, and then the related skills, how to construct an argument, how to cite evidence, and so on. All right. so basically, if you are building up this bigger thing towards the central focus, right, you've broken it down into a step-by-step -step pr procedure, where are you going to get your evidence that every building block that you're giving the students is actually working and can they pull it all together. Now you just are going to focus on one assessment. So if you have, you know, say the first day that you're doing it, you're just talking about different forms of persuasive essays and you want to develop some kind of vocabulary and a context, your assessment on that day might just be kind of, you know, something along the lines of getting to know whether your students understand the different kinds and the different parts of a persuasive essay. On the second day, say you're trying to get them to build logical arguments working on premises and conclusions and different types of evidence, you might have some assessments working on those things. Uh, ultimately, the whole unit, right, you might have an assessment where they actually have to write a persuasive essay, and that could be your summative assessment that you use and talk about and, and try to determine whether or not all these lessons together really culminated in success. So you can, you can choose what level you go at, and depending on when you're teaching and what you're teaching, it's probably going to be different. Second thing, you define and submit your criteria. Basically, what are you asking them to do? Your evaluation criteria is really, if you're having a project, what is the rubric? If you're uh, using a worksheet, what are the goals that that thing is assessing? Then you collect and analyze your student work, looking at the whole class. Um, you, it, it, depending on what you do, uh, you will have text-based stuff, text-based stuff, video stuff, or audio stuff. Any one of those is fine. More than likely, it will be some form of written work. But again, that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. Um, if you or when you get your whole class analyzed, you are also going to select three different work samples um, trying to represent different patterns of learning. Now, this typically is presented as a high-achieving student, a middle-of-the-road student, and a low-performing uh, student. It could just be, especially if you have a really uniform classroom, uh, that there are different errors that people are making, and you are trying to describe how, you know, error group one is working through their problems and how you're going to support that, how you're going to give them feedback, and then error group two. They do make a note that at least one of these focused students must have specific learning needs. Well, we all have learning needs, so that's not really that big of a deal. But they give an example of students with IEPs, 504s, ELL students, uh, people who are struggling with the basic skills, or even a student who is excelling and needs further challenge. So you can uh, put any of those in there, but you need to have one of those. Again, if you have both ends of the spectrum, that's even better. It makes your discussion a little bit easier. 
You need to document the feedback you give to the three focus students. So basically, uh, one of the things they'll be looking at as we look at that, you need to give uh, positives and negatives. You uh, need to talk about what they did well and how they can do that even better, but you also need to talk about what they didn't do so well and how, can they, how they can do that better too. Um, you can submit extra materials if you need. Uh, Again, you can read this stuff, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. Uh, and then you just answer uh, the prompts. And we're going to go over those prompts and the corresponding rubrics one at a time. And that will be the subject of the next video.